Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. So today I'm going to talk about the path from postdoc to professor. And essentially here we are talking of a professor position in a research university. So essentially if you think about it, one of the main reasons for doing a postdoc is to prepare you for a faculty position. So let's look at some of the aspects which are required for this jump. So before I begin, I'll again try to point out to you the benefits of being a postdoc. When you are a PhD student, you are somebody who is always going to finish the PhD and all your friends, your relatives, your well-wishers are always going to be asking you the question, when are you finishing your PhD? When are you getting a real job? When are you going to make a lot of money and so on? And the answer to this question is extremely difficult to give because neither you nor in most cases your supervisor has a very clear concept about when you are going to finish your PhD. So essentially there is always one more experiment to do, there is always one more paper to write, there is one more simulation to do before you actually get your PhD. So that uncertainty or pall of gloom hangs on your head when you are a PhD student which is removed when you finish your PhD and you are doing a postdoc position somewhere. So now let's look at some of the things which are required to do a postdoc and I'm going to list five points here which are good points when doing your postdoc which will help you get a faculty position. So number one is the university name or the institution name and this name is very important because as I have mentioned before most faculty selection committees are very interested in placing the person somewhere. So essentially what they do is they look at your final location where you are applying from. So this becomes very important because generally what happens in the academic system is that it's very hard to go up but it's relatively easy to come down. So you will rarely hear of people who have done a postdoc at University X and go to University Y which has a better ranking or a better name. But it's generally expected that if you do a postdoc at University X, you can go to University Z, which has a lower ranking or name. So that's the way things work. So by that definition, you should always try to get the best named postdoc which you can get. So think about the prospect of having this on your CV. So certainly if you have this institutional name on your CV, it is going to confer all the advantages and prestige of this institution onto you. So that way you will look good in terms of your CV. So if you can get to any of the top universities like Stanford or Oxford or Cambridge or Caltech or MIT or Princeton or Berkeley, try to do that. And if you are in a developing country, it's particularly important and useful to try to go to a developed country and do your postdoc. So in case you are able to make a jump to some place like Cambridge or Caltech or Princeton, it's of course very great. But even if you are not able to make a jump to the top universities in the developed countries, you can make a jump to some university in the developed country. And this is also going to look good on your resume. Now, what I have seen is that many people who do PhD in developed countries, after they spend a stint of two to three years in a developed country, they develop a lot of confidence. They develop a globalized view of how research is done and this happens because once they go to a developed country and they do research for two to three years they travel around in conferences they meet people they realize that there's nothing particularly big deal about doing research in a developed country and they also figure out some of the ways of talking making presentations doing research which will help them later wherever they go. So again, this thing is very important that there is a rise in confidence which happens to you if you go to a top university and to a top university in a developed country and work there for a few years, you essentially become a different and improved person. So in this case, the postdoc acts like a finishing school which removes any kind of blemishes which may, you may have in your PhD. And so it brings out a better and more marketable person. So let's look at point two, and that is your supervisor name and level in the community of researchers. 
So again, this is an important aspect, but I would put it second because like I mentioned before, the selection committee typically goes with the name of the university. But where the advisor becomes useful is that this is the person who is going to help you become a better researcher, to write a few papers in top-notch journals and so on. So again, you need to have a good fit here in terms of personality and so on, but also check out the lab. See that this person and his lab are regularly publishing papers in good journals. Check out the journals where they are publishing papers. See if this person writes proposals frequently. Does he make his postdocs part of the proposal writing system and so on. You may also inquire some things about um, what's the placement of names as far as this person is concerned in terms of paper. So essentially some people put their postdoc or PhD student names first and this is always good for you. Some people do put it last and this is not good for you. So keep that in mind that if your postdoc supervisor puts your name somewhere in the second, third or at the end of the name list in the papers, that may not come across very well to a selection committee, though it may have been that you have done 80% of the work. So these are certain things which are very difficult to correct once you have actually joined the university. So you should try to correct these things before you join the university and figure out your postdoc supervisor in great depth. You don't want to be with somebody who is a somewhat difficult person to work with. Now let's come to number three and number three point I would say is that the university is much more important than the supervisor because the supervisor though he is important in terms of guiding you and helping you do research after some time will fade into oblivion and what will stay in your resume or CV is the name of the university. So if you get to spend a couple of years at Harvard or TU München or University of Tokyo or University of Melbourne you should never give up that particular opportunity because that's going to stay in your resume for the rest of your life and this globalized perspective is also going to help you to land a better faculty position. Now number four is that always try to write good papers in top journals and if you have published let's say three to five papers in your PhD try to write three to five papers in your postdoc. So in your PhD you may have published say three papers in a period of five years so in a postdoc in a period of three years you should write three to five papers. So remember that when you are doing postdoc you don't have classes to study, you don't have comprehensive exam, you don't have a lot of tension which is involved in figuring out research problems and in getting trained in research and so now you are going to be more productive. So in the postdoc period you can actually write as many papers as in your PhD and if not more in terms of your CV. So now this of course helps your CV enormously. If you are a person who is somewhat weak in his CV in the PhD, maybe you have one paper or two paper, you can always use the postdoc to strengthen your CV. So you can have five to ten papers at the end of your postdoc and this is going to make you a strong professor candidate. So remember also that the name of the journal is typically more important than the impact factor because though some people talk a lot about impact factor at the end of the day the selection committee is typically chaired by some senior professors and various deans and directors of institutes and universities are senior professors and these people essentially are well versed with the name of the top journal so if you are published in well named journals such as in the IEEE transactions, in SIAM journals, in Nature, in Science or any of the professional society journals that's also going to come across as very good possibility. People typically do not give too much importance to impact factor but if the impact factor is too low that's not a good thing. More important is the fact that the journals you have published in should be indexed in Web of Science or Scopus because if they are not indexed in Web of Science or Scopus, then people may have some doubts about the credibility of the journal and always steer clear of any predatory journal or journals which have just come out because people may cast aspersions on your entire CV even if you have a single paper in a journal which is considered predatory or which nobody has heard of. So that's something to keep in mind. Finally, point number five and this is probably the most important though I have kept it at the end is that when you choose your postdoc position, look for 
research topics which are considered to be hot as far as university system is concerned. Now, the topic which is considered hot in the university or academic scenario may be very different from what is considered a hot field in the company world or in the university world. So always make sure that you are going to a field which is currently hot in academia. So for example, currently nanomaterials may be hot or metamaterials may be a hot field or deep learning may be a hot field or cryptography may be a hot field. So what is meant here by a hot field is that these areas are attracting a lot of money in terms of research funding and so much of the money will be going in this direction and this will make you a good candidate for faculty positions because remember that one of the main things a faculty has to do is to bring in money in the university and this money is then used to do the research so if you are working in a field where there is a large amount of money out there which is a hard field then it's much easier for you to get money than if you work in a very classical field which is involving some solution of arcane differential equations or something like that in those cases it's harder to actually get funding for such type of research and so you may not be able to get so much money though the problem you are actually doing may be a very onerous and difficult problem so these were some points i had for you about how to go from the postdoc position to a professor position this is the aspiration of many postdocs unfortunately there are few faculty positions out there so it's also difficult and competitive so that's something to keep in mind don't put all your eggs into this professor basket also keep open the opportunity that you may have to get a job in the corporate sector so i have made a video on that you can check that out also so that was enough for today and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then